The Apple TV is one of my favorite smart home devices, but Apple does not give us that many features in the home app. You can really only control the playback and that's about it. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the ultimate hack to unlock more features for your Apple TV and how you can use these extra features in your automations. I will say that these extra features are not officially supported by Apple, so we'll be using Homebridge and a plugin created by the genius Maximilian Leith that will expose these extra features to the Home app. Now, I recently made a video of hidden features for your Apple TV, and I showcased some of these extra features in the Home app, and I had you guys comment the word movie if you wanted to see how to do this. So this video is gonna be a deep dive on how to set everything up and what you can do, and some issues that you should be aware of. This only takes three simple steps, is really easy to set up, and only requires a few things. You'll need a supported Apple TV. I'm using the 4K model, the home app settings for speakers and TVs set to one of these options, and of course a third party bridge to get these extra features to show up in the home app. There's different options that you can use like Homebridge, but this will not work with Hoops. For this video, I'll be using Homebridge running on a Raspberry Pi, and I'll leave a link to everything that you will need and all these instructions down in the description below. Step number one is to install and configure the plugin. Log in to Homebridge, Go to the Plugins tab at the top and search Apple TV Enhanced. Choose the Verified option, then tap this download icon here to install it and choose the latest version. The plugin will take a few seconds to install and whenever it's done, now we can configure the plugin for what features we want to show up in the home app within these four sections. Starting with the basics. These are settings that apply to all the Apple TVs and where you can adjust what features are and are not exposed to the home app. Everything that is exposed in the home app is exposed as either a motion sensor, a switch, or a fan. Media types are exposed as motion sensors, and you can choose how many media types to show. And whenever one of these media types is playing, then it will show that motion has been detected. The device status is also exposed as a motion sensor, and you can choose which sensors are exposed and which ones are not. Anytime the status of the Apple TV changes, It'll show as motion has been detected or not detected, all of the playback controls on the physical remote can be used to trigger any of these sensors. Next is device state delay, and you can customize how long the Apple TV will wait before updating the status of the Apple TV in the home app. Next we have remote keys as switches. This essentially turns every button on the Apple TV remote, except for Siri, into a switch that's exposed to the home app. So like menu, play, pause, power on and off, the volume, etc. And you're able to customize which buttons you do and do not want exposed. And what's really cool is that these buttons can now be used in your scenes and in your automations. So for example, whenever a show is paused, then it can turn on lights. And whenever a show is playing, then it can turn lights off. Let's look at custom input URIs. This is one of my absolute favorite features of this plugin because it allows you to open up a show or movie within a streaming app. Now you can create a Siri shortcut to open up a specific app on an Apple TV, but you're not able to open up a show or movie within that app. Well, with this plugin, you can now open up a specific show on your Apple TV. It shows up as an input in the home app and the name can be customized to whatever you're watching. Later on in the video, I'll show you step-by-step step how to set everything up and a few issues that you should be aware of. Next is Avada Kedavra, which is a Harry Potter reference that destroys something or somebody on impact. This concept translates to the Apple TV to force quit all apps automatically. It appears as an input in the home app and it will close all your open apps for you and you can choose how many apps that you want to close at one time. The next settings are helpful if your TV supports HDMI CEC, which is where you're able to control the TV volume with your Apple TV remote. The volume can be exposed as a fan accessory to control the volume of your TV speaker or another audio output like HomePods. Though I cannot get this to work with any of my TVs that do support HDMI CEC with either using the TV speaker or whenever the Apple TV is paired to HomePods. 
You're also able to change how the Apple TV is exposed to HomeKit as either an Apple TV accessory or as a set top box accessory, which has a different icon for a visual difference. This does not change the features you get in the Home app, just how the icon looks, and it can make things less confusing and be helpful to differentiate it from the official Apple TV accessory, especially if you have both Apple TVs in the same room in the Home app. Next we have device specific overrides. This will override any settings for an Apple TV set up in the basics tab, which means you can really customize which features are exposed on a per Apple TV basis and not apply to all of them if you have more than one. So you can really get granular for the features you do or do not want in the home app for a specific Apple TV. Then we have discovery. And this is the settings on how the plugin will discover the Apple TVs on your network that are online. There's different types of technology the plugin can use. I would keep multicast enabled, but if it's not finding your Apple TV, then you can use unicast and add an aesthetic IP for the Apple TV and it should find it on your network then. But again, multicast has worked great for me and has discovered all the Apple TVs on my network automatically. If you have an Apple TV that you don't want paired to the plugin and thus not exposed to HomeKit, then you can add it to the blacklist here with the MAC address of the Apple TV. And finally, there's other, which is basically just extra settings that you can change if you want, but I would personally leave everything the way that it is. Once you have everything configured for your Apple TVs, go ahead and hit save and then restart your home bridge. By the way, every time you make a change in the plugin, then you do have to hit save and restart home bridge in order for the settings to sync to HomeKit. Step number two is we now need to connect our Apple TVs to the plugin and then later on we can add the Apple TVs to HomeKit. Now each Apple TV is exposed as its own individual accessory and if you have multiple Apple TVs and you want them all synced to HomeKit, then you will have to pair each Apple TV to the plugin. So because of this, I would highly recommend unplugging all of your Apple TVs except for the first one you want to add to HomeKit. This makes the setup process much easier and less confusing and you'll see why here in a minute. But first, you wanna go ahead and get in front of your Apple TV while you set this up. I'm going to be using the Apple TV in my bedroom for this example. Once you have the settings configured the way you want them to for the Apple TV and you have a restarted home bridge, the plugin will automatically start discovering the Apple TVs that are online on your network. Go to the logs of the plugin and search for a line that says, you need to pair your Apple TV before the plugin can connect to it. Enter the pin that is currently displayed on the device and it shows an IP address of the Apple TV and the port. You want to click on this IP address and it will take you straight to the pairing page. Now by this time, a four digit pin should have automatically appeared on your Apple TV that you want to add to HomeKit. Enter in the pin code and if it's right, you'll see a message saying the pin was transmitted successfully. Now the pin code does refresh every 30 seconds, so you wanna be pretty quick whenever you're setting this up. And if the pin code does time out, then you'll get a new code. And again, you will have to repeat this process for every single Apple TV that you want to get synced to HomeKit. If you try to add all your Apple TVs at once, then all of your Apple TVs will start showing this code and you're not gonna be able to add all of them at one time because the codes will constantly expire. So it's much easier to get started with one, get it connected, then plug in another Apple TV and repeat this process for every Apple TV that you want to add to HomeKit. Now that we have configured the HomeKit settings for the Apple TV and connected the Apple TV to the plugin, we can now add the Apple TV to the Home app and check out all these new features. So you want to go back to the logs of the plugin and look for a line that says, please add the name of your Apple TV. In my case, it's my master Apple TV manually in the home app. And then it shows a setup code to add to Apple Home. For some reason, we cannot add any smart devices to Apple Home from a Mac. So we'll need either an iPad or an iPhone to add the device to HomeKit. Open the Home app tap the plus button, then tap add new accessory. We don't have a physical QR code to scan, so tap more options. And you should see your Apple TV in the list of nearby devices. 
Tap on it and a message will come up saying, this is an uncertified accessory and may not work reliably. This comes up for any accessory that is not officially certified by Apple to work with HomeKit. So just tap add anyway and type in the setup code from the logs and tap continue. Then it will add to Apple Home and you can choose the room it's in and change the name. Then it will show you all the apps that are installed on this Apple TV and we'll dive deeper into this in a minute. And here are the features that are exposed from the plugin and now it's added to the Apple Home app. Let's check out all the extra features that are in the Home app for the Apple TV and then I'll show you some fun ways that you can use these extra features to create automations. So when you tap on the Apple TV here, you have controls for the power and for scrolling between each app that's installed on the Apple TV and you can easily switch between different apps on the Apple TV. Scroll down, you'll see the switches, and these are the remote keys from the plugin, and whenever you tap the cog wheel here, you can adjust more settings. You'll see a warning that says this is not a certified accessory, but this is again normal because it's not officially supported by Apple to work with HomeKit. You're able to change the name, but not the icon, you can choose the room that it's in. And under accessories, you can see everything from the plugin that's exposed to Apple Home as either a motion sensor or a switch. I like to choose show as separate tiles, which will ungroup the switches from the accessory so I can easily see them from here, but you can easily regroup them if you want. Going back in the settings, whenever you scroll all the way down, you'll see all the apps installed on the Apple TV exposed as inputs and you can choose to show or hide certain apps and even rename them if you want to change the input name. Now going to a specific input will open that app, but it will not open up a show or a movie within the app. Now earlier in the video, I mentioned how you can open up a show or a movie from within a streaming app, and you can, but you cannot set it up from the home app. You have to go back to the plugin to set that up, which will then sync to HomeKit. And here's how to do that. First, find a show or movie you want to watch and grab the link from a streaming service. Go back into the settings of the plugin and under custom input URIs, paste the URL and you can add as many as you want and reorder them. Then save the changes and restart HomeBridge. Then you'll see the link appear as an input name in the Home app. Just rename it to whatever the show or movie is called. And now you can use the input to open up a specific show or movie within a streaming app. This is incredible, but it does not work with every streaming app, unfortunately. I've tested with movies and shows from the Apple TV app and Disney Plus, and those work fine, but anything from Netflix just does not work. I will say this is not really designed for movies or something that you only really watch once or twice. It's really designed for TV shows or something that you keep going back to that has like multiple episodes. Back in the home app at the bottom, you'll see info about the Apple TV itself, like the serial number, which is actually the MAC address, the model of the Apple TV, and a friendly reminder that this is not a certified HomeKit accessory. The plugin also exposes a fully functional remote of the Apple TV in Control Center that can be used to navigating the Apple TV, play pause, power and volume control, but no Siri support like you get with the official Apple TV remote in Control Center. Though I will say, having a remote from the plugin and a remote from the official Apple TV in Control Center does make things very confusing and I'm not a fan of having double remotes for the Apple TV in Control Center. I wish there was a way to disable this. The best part about having these extra features of the Apple TV in the Home app is that they can all be used in your scenes and automations. And here's some cool automations that you can make. For example, you could create a scene called Watch TV that powers on the Apple TV, opens a streaming app of your choice, or maybe a specific show that you're currently watching, and controls lights to set the ambience. Another idea is that when you pause the show, say like to get a snack or to use the bathroom, certain lights can turn on to help you see you while walking around. And whenever you get back and hit play, your lights can automatically turn off. This is awesome. Just use the play and pause motion sensors as triggers to toggle certain lights on or off and choose the lights to control. Instead of using the Apple TV remote to open and close apps, you can create scenes for each app you use to automatically open an app. So one scene could be used for Netflix, one scene for Disney Plus, and one for the Apple TV app. 
This is a super quick way to start watching content. Scenes can also be used to control the Apple TV power and volume. Now some of the automations I personally use are when my Apple TV is turned on, a light strip behind the TV automatically turns on for ambient lighting. And whenever the Apple TV turns off, the light strip behind the TV automatically turns off as well. Now, as incredible as these automations are, you can take it to the next level by using other smart home devices and your location to automatically control your Apple TV. I like using an Akara mini switch to run a scene that turns on my living room Apple TV and opens one of the best TV shows ever made, The Office and a double press turns the Apple TV off. Another idea is to use it to switch between apps. So let's say you're watching something on the Apple TV app and decide you want to watch something on Disney Plus instead. Well, you can use a different button press to switch between content. Or whenever you arrive home at night or when a door is unlocked, you can have your Apple TV automatically turn on and open up your favorite streaming app to jump right into watching TV. Now, just as a note, whenever you are creating these automations, your home bridge and your Apple TV must be online. Otherwise, the home app will crash whenever you try to create an automation and the Apple TV and or home bridge is offline. If you are having issues with the plugin or connecting the Apple TV to HomeKit, there's a known issues page as well as a page for open bugs and previously fixed issues that may help you out. The HomeBridge plugin created by the genius Maximilian Leith is an incredibly easy way to get extra Apple TV features exposed to the Apple Home app that you would normally not get from Apple. I've been using this plugin for the past few weeks now and although it's not officially supported by Apple, I have found the plugin to be very responsive, rock solid, and gets updated regularly. But these are not the only hidden features that you can do with an Apple TV, because in this video right here, I show you some more hidden features that will change the way you use your Apple TV. I'll see y'all in the next video.